God of heaven, you have come to seek will meet you at the very point of your need. All the testimonies we have had this morning are pointed to the fact that God is still working. And he will work a work in your life. Once again, why not appreciate him for those strange testimonies. Thank him for deliverances from even ritual killers, kidnappers. Thank him for deliverances from equipment. Thank him for life that has been preserved, testimonies shared. We had in the first service today, someone 10 years after the last child being blessed with the baby girl. Father, we thank you. To you be all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. That is why you are called Jehovah. That is why you are called That Jehovah. is why you are called Jehovah. What to say you will do? That is why questions in our hearts. In Jesus' excellent name. Please put your beautiful hands together for Jesus. And you may please be seated. I welcome each and every one of us again in the name of Jesus to this our covenant day of fruitfulness. It's my new dawn era. Congratulations. They will congratulate you after this service. In this service, not only will God give you a testimony, He will give you testimonies that will share you. Yeah. There are testimonies you share. There are testimonies that share you. Can you imagine that woman for 10 years, they didn't see her with any pregnancy, and then you start seeing signs and wonders. People will just be, eh, what is happening? And before you know it, that desired baby girl landed. She doesn't need to share the testimony. People will be sharing it for her. God will give you a testimony that will share you. Yeah. Now remember, we'll be building up on our senior teaching we began since the first Sunday of the month. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no balm in Gilead? We saw part 4A in the first service. Please, I 
beckon on you and I plead with you to buy that teaching. Many things I prepared to say in the first service, I didn't say it. I was saying some things that I was learning from here. I'm telling you, I'm your pastor. There are certain things that came here. I didn't know it. For instance, when I was telling you wonder, I didn't plan it. As I was here, he was giving it to me like that. Since the day, God blessed be the day, he gave me the power of illustrative teaching. I cried for it and I got it. Whenever I teach anything without planning it, he gives me illustrations that will help it go. He was teaching me that one here. Wonders. Just be what you call Jesus. Wonders. <laughs> Hallelujah. Please get the teaching of the first service. Now, we're going to build up in this second service. Is there no Obama in Gilead? Part 4B. Remember, Jesus is the greatest physician. And he's the, he's the physician here in Gilead, in the church. The word of God is the balm. And just like I said in the first service, it is wisdom for you to follow the prescription of the doctor. The doctor does not follow you home to know whether you take his prescription or not. It's not his duty. It's not his assignment. If you want to be healed, you follow the prescription. The same way, if you want to get your healing, you follow the prescription of the greatest physician. And his prescription comes by his words. That's why I know by the word that will be coming to you today, healing will be effected in Jesus' name. Remember that this is our covenant day of fruitfulness. And um, I want you to come with me to Genesis 1, 28. Genesis 9, 1. Genesis 1, 28. And God blessed them. What did God do? Did God curse them? What did God do? What will God do to you today? <laughs> and what is the manner of the blessing? And God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God cannot lie. Genesis 9-1. Somebody said maybe the first one was a mistake. Now remember, at this Genesis 9-1, that was after the first earth was destroyed by flood. God was raising another generation through Noah. And he said this to them. Genesis 9-1. And God blessed them. The same language. And God blessed Noah and his sons and said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. The same order. What did God say to Noah? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth. What did God say to the first man? Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue it, have dominion. But look at the first three blessing, God didn't change it. Which means up to today, he has not changed it. <laughs> I stand here today as an agent of heaven and a voice crying from heaven. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. 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 In the name of Jesus. Blessings are conveyed by words. And God said, and God said, the same way God said, 
light be. There was darkness everywhere. But God said, light be. And light came into existence. The same way God is saying, be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. You don't have any choice but to be fruitful. To multiply. To replenish the earth. I've discovered if you have knowledge of elementary mathematics, Indians taught me mathematics, and I like mathematics. Now, multiplication is better than addition. They are all increases, but multiplication is better than addition. 3 plus 3 is equal to 6, but 3 times 3 is equal to 9. Whatever you're doing as a work of hand, you will never see stagnation again. Yeah. If God said be fruitful, which means you are seedful. Did you get that? If God said be fruitful, without seed, you can't talk of fruits. If he said be fruitful, it means you are seedful. So somebody have checked you and say, hey, you, don't, you can't see any egg. There is no, your ovary is not working well. The person is lying. Look at this one I'm seeing here now. The person look at something and say, look, you don't have eggs again. For your <laughs> but this one I'm seeing it here, he said, be fruitful, which means you are seedful. Multiply, replenish the earth. God has not changed his mind. He has not. The first blessing of God to man is the blessing of fruitfulness. And he has not changed his mind. So anytime somebody says, God bless you, let it enter you. The first blessing is what? Fruitfulness. Second one is what? Multiplication. Third one is what? Replenish the earth. Fourth one is what? Subduing. Fifth one is what? Have dominion. And you can't be talking of dominion if you are not a king. Kingdom means king's dominion, king's domain. <laughs> and he had redeemed us unto our God to be kings and priests and we shall reign on the earth. You will not lose your own throne. In Jesus' glorious name. But let's focus on what we are here to do this morning. I checked through the scriptures and I discovered that God wants you and I fruitful. As a matter of fact, uh, the Bible describes you and I as the trees of righteousness, the planting of the law. Isaiah 61 verse 3. The Bible says, To appoint unto them the morning Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the law, that they might be glorified. We are the planting of the Lord. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion. How can people be mourning in Zion? Zion is a place of joy. It's a place of strength. It's a place of renewal. But how can people be mourning in Zion? I don't know who have been mourning. Who have been shedding secret tears. Who have been crying. Please weep not. Hey, Bezina. Choko nonso. This is a prophetic song to someone. It will be good for you. The year will end well for you. So stop weeping, stop crying, stop asking God, why me? Stop asking God, where are you? He's still in heaven. He has not changed position. It will be good for you. What they meant for evil will turn to a testimony for you. Say with me, I will not mourn in Zion. I am the planting of the Lord. A tree of righteousness. Hold that one one side. 
Now, not only are you a planting of the Lord, a tree of righteousness, you have been planted in a fruitful hill. Where are you planted? Uh, where manured garden. Amen. <laughs> Isaiah 5 verse 1. Now will I sing to my way beloved, a song of my beloved, touching his vineyard. He said, my way belong had a vineyard in a very fruitful hill. Where are you planted? In a very fruitful hill. That's why, you know, I, I feel for some that don't play with church. Where you are is a very fruitful hill. And things follow you here to make sure things are working for you. We may not need to pray for you. We may not need to lay hands on you. But in as much as you are here, hearing the word of God, you just will work. This is a very fruitful hill. Am I the one that called this so? God. Very. Not just fruitful here. Very fruitful here. Now you are planted in a very fruitful here. Nothing will stop your fruitfulness. I made this second point I'm making here. I'm going somewhere. Remember? You are the planting of the law. You are a tree of righteousness. Number two, I said you are planted in a fruitful hill. And the Bible called it a very fruitful hill. Isaiah 5 verse 1. Now in Genesis 1 verse 11, God made it clear to us that every tree produces after its kind. Every tree. Is it true? Every tree produces after its kind. You know what that means? You will produce after your own kind. Genesis 1:11. And God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the half yielding seed, the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth and it was so and it was what and it was what it was so and has not changed from so every tree produces after its kind every tree has its own seed within it that produces after its own kind therefore nothing shall stop your fruitfulness from now Remember, you are the tree of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. Planted in a very fruitful field. And every tree produces after its kind. Every tree is seeded enough to produce after its own kind. Now hear me. You will not lack testimonies in the name of Jesus. You will begin to produce after your kind. You will produce after your root in the name of Jesus. Have you seen those producing after their kind? Have you seen ghosts producing after their kind? You will produce after your kind. I prophesy to someone here. You will never lack a son. You will never lack a daughter. To stand before God in the name of Jesus. The works of your hand will never lack fruit. Your business, your career will never lack fruit. Oh, Jesus came to the fig tree looking heavy to produce, it was not producing. And Jesus cursed that fig tree. Now, hear this. If there be anything in your life that is anti-fruitfulness, I curse it now in the name of Jesus. Every power that are using to divert blessing from you, every power that are using to stop you from being who God wants you to be, every covering, anywhere, 
producing anti anti fruitfulness virus I command such to be terminated be fruitful multiply replenish the earth be fruitful multiply replenish the earth in the name of Jesus every medical spiritual biological issues complications standing against your fruitfulness hormonal imbalance ovarian cysts low sperm or no sperm count every form of hotness of the womb everything that is eating your seed in the womb destroying your seed you go to a hospital they say nothing is wrong but you can't see the fruits I decree in the name of Jesus such things be destroyed right now one day that was in Enugu then after service like this the woman ran to me and my wife at the office he said daddy 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 it don't happen again it don't happen again I said what happened again he said that is another miscarriage and that was five miscarriages in five years of marriage I was grieved with compassion what is it now somebody is here the last miscarriage you had will be the last forever <laughs> last year in a fruitful company class I told them that look the last menstrual flow will be the last did you hear the testimony here so a few Sundays ago somebody as she was in her menstrual flow in that period that was the last doctor said she cannot mother a child naturally because the tubes were blocked but you know what the tubes opened by the word of the Lord she conceived get back a few weeks ago to a baby year after three and a half years now somebody is here the last miscarriage you had as a matter of fact he made you to cry but hear me God is wiping your tears he's going to give you the baby that will stay in the name of Jesus Christ so this woman cried that it has happened again I said so what happened what do you want now he said daddy 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 the way it is now I want triplets yeah one has not happened I want triplets and I told my wife let's pray for this woman with compassion in my heart I don't know you know you know, some things, if you have not gone through some things before, you may not understand how it looks like. Yeah. I understand her pains. I know what she was feeling. Now, we prayed. I said, let it be to you according to your faith. Wipe away your tears. She wiped her tears practically and left. The short of the story is that this woman conceived. For the first time in five years, she carried the baby to the end. And when she delivered, two boys, one girl. And I started calculating. I said, if this woman was to be born in every, you know, to meet for in the three years, you know, or five years, if she was to give him birth, she wouldn't have given birth to three children. At least, woman, it not be so. He will give some gab. But God said, look, all your wasted years, I will restore it. <laughs> and that time I've left Enugu, but I traveled to go and carry children myself. Because that was the first triplet I was to see in my ministry. Triplets. And since that time, there is no station I have been, I've not seen it. I'm waiting for this, the one from this album. <laughs> if it's anointing for triplets, that one is here now. <laughs> From that one, from station to station. As a mother of parents in Osaka, we saw quadruplets. Quadruplets. One of them got triplets and dedicated the triplets because it was after 10 years with three cows. I became a cow killer. 
three. He brought three cows. You know, this one, some people dedicate children with nothing. He came with three cows. He said, Pastor, I know what God has done for me. He said, That's my promise to God, and I'm fulfilling it. He, he, the compound like this, three cows. Man, man, man. I don't know who is here today trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Your own may not even be fruit of the womb. It may be fruit for your business. Everybody wants to partake of what he's doing. But you can't see something from what you are doing. The same God will visit you in the name of Jesus. Be fruitful. Multiply. Replenish the earth. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' glorious name. As I shared a testimony with you how a young man and a woman married for 10 years. We are, they were then in um, Abuja, but relocated to Kaduna and saw what God was doing in the church and they joined the church. Came to the Bible school, the wife did Wobi, so the husband let her join and did Wobi the next section. And the woman was practicing the faith she learned. <laughs> she would fold the baby wrapper as a baby and start breastfeeding imaginarily the baby. The husband says something you are doing. What is the problem? But the short of it is that she's conceived after 10 years. Just like the testimony we had in the first service today. Only that her own was fresh. Amen. <laughs> 10 years. She got a baby girl. The name of the baby is Purity. I won't forget. The husband said, while sharing the testimony on the altar of God, because some don't share their own testimonies. But this was woman, the man rose up to share testimony. He didn't allow the wife to talk. He came to talk by himself. He said, look, this is what my wife did. That's how we knew that she was breastfeeding baby, you know, with rappers, a baby. God visited them. Now, the man was keeping German Shepherd dog too. For 10 years or so, none of them has gotten pregnant. But when the wife conceived, one of the dogs conceived. So when he was sharing his testimony, he said, when God visits you, even your own dog will be pregnant. <laughs> Glory to God. That was total visit. God will give you a visitation. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Everyone trusting God for the fruit of the womb. The baby items you have brought here today, your children will use it. Amen. Maybe you have named your babies, you have not named your babies, whatever name you're giving them, those babies are coming. God is not doing anything with children in heaven. Therefore, because fruit of the womb is his reward, I command him to reward you with it. Psalm 113 verse 9, he said, you make a joyful mother of children. He make a woman to give her to be a joyful mother of children, not joyful mother of child. In case you have one or two, you want to have more, God will give you more. Somebody didn't understand. You have one before, two, three, and you want to have more. Some even arguing. The man said, I want. The woman said, I don't want. If you want more, God will give you more. In the name of Jesus. So shall it be. In Jesus' glorious name. A man was once, for good ten years, he suffered affliction in the work of his hand. What is the problem? Any time is December. All the things he has labeled from January to December will vanish. Because one calamity or the other, one problem or the other will come that will sweep off all that he has labeled in the year. And this continued from 2005 to 2015. When he joined the church. Not only that, even in his marriage, there was no child. It was after the, it was a year after he got the first child. Now, when he came to the church, he started hearing the word of God and believed the word of God. And things started changing. And December that year, he ordered some goods from our nature to Kaduna when they were on the way coming. The vehicle caught fire. But to show you that God has done something for him, the fire kept burning all the goose in the vehicle. 
until two cartons to his own, the fire stopped. That could have been a setback. Some of his goods were carried to Kano one time. He thought he has lost them, but he recovered them. For the first time in that 2015, he didn't suffer that mishap. 2016, he came up to say, this is the best year I've ever done business because I didn't borrow to this year. Why? Every year, he must borrow to start afresh. But because the calamity of 2015 didn't happen, but so he, as I'm talking to you now, he's building a house in his village. God establishes progress. Now hear me. Whatever you are doing that has not been working, not that you are not working, you are working, you are showing steady efforts, but the things are not working. It's not producing. From now, I command so to begin to produce. Somebody say, Pastor, but I am already doing well. There is a place called forward. God will make you to do better. In the name of Jesus Christ. Quickly, let's understand our right to total heads as we journey in this teaching. It is your understanding of your right to total head that determines what happens to you. Because until your head is in place, every other thing falls out of place. By redemption, we have said we share the eternal life with God. So whatever cannot affect God cannot affect you. Also remember that by the Holy Ghost that dwells in us, we are spiritually positioned to enjoy divine health. By the Holy Ghost that dwells in us, we are spiritually positioned to enjoy divine health. Matthew 3, 11 to 13. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, in whose shoes I'm not worthy to be here. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his weight into the garner. But he will, burn, he will burn up the child with unquenchable fire. Then come Jesus unto Galilee, to Jordan, unto John, to be baptized of him. The Holy Ghost inside us is the unquenchable fire. So if there be anything buying and selling in your body, the Holy Ghost fan will gather them. It will burn them. In the name of Jesus. That strange movement in the leg, in the body, in the head. Sometimes you come to your neck and hook you there, you'll be uncomfortable. Sometimes you come to your abdomen. That strange movement. I command the fire of the Holy Ghost to burn it now in the name of Jesus. That stranger that S ray cannot find, Z ray cannot find, scan cannot find. Troubling you, I command it to be troubled by the fire of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Romans 8:11. The Bible says, it, "In the same spirit that raises up from the dead, dwelling in you, that same spirit will quicken your mortal body. The same spirit that raised the body of Jesus that was dead can raise your body that is alive, can quicken your body, can multiply, can strengthen your body. Therefore, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I command you to be strengthened." Your eyes strengthen. Your ears strengthen. Your legs strengthen. Your body strengthen. Every part of your sensitive organ strengthen. Oh, I command vitality to come to you. Strength and vitality to come to you. By the quickening power of the Holy Ghost, every organ that is dying, I command it to be quickened. By the quickening power of the Holy Ghost, everything that ought to be alive, to make you enjoy life, I command it to be quickened. Somebody by the Spirit of God, favor is being quickened for you. Because we are the say no to others, they will say yes to you. You will go to that interview, it will be a Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Please also understand that engaging the name of Jesus is one of the avenues to receive your healing. Engaging the name of Jesus. When Peter said to that man, Silver and gold, have I not but what I have? I give to you the name of Jesus. Rise up and walk. Acts 3 6. The man rose up and walked. So, the name of Jesus is one avenue to receive our healing. But quickly, what is in the name of Jesus that he is? 
But it's in the name of Jesus that he is. In the first service, we saw some, and I encourage you to please get the teaching of the first service. We saw that the name of Jesus is full of wonders and all that. Now we want to build up in this second service. What is in the name of Jesus that he is? Number one in this service, the name of Jesus carries the irrevocable gift of God, which empowers him to heal as he wills. The name of Jesus carries the irrevocable gift of God, which empowers him to heal as he wills. Philippians chapter 2, 9 to 11. Wherefore God also has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of taste in heaven or taste on the earth and under the earth the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father the irrevocable gift of God has already been domiciled in him Romans 11 29 for the gift and calling of God is without repentance so God is not changing his mind God is not taking that gift back Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13 verse 8. So if he has ever healed anybody before, he can heal you today. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, the name that is higher than every name that is named, whatever name of sickness or disease, diabetes of any kind, high blood sugar of any kind, every form of strange movement, every form of PID, pelvic inflammatory disease, ulcers, pies, whatever name that is named, maybe very, very long, long name that you can't even pronounce, but you are carrying the result. I decree today, in the name of Jesus, such shame bow to the authority in the name of Jesus. I command diabetes to bow to the authority in the name of Jesus. High blood pressure, bow to the authority in the name of Jesus. Arthritis, bow to the authority in the name of Jesus. Partial or full blindness, bow to the authority in the name of Jesus. Glaucoma, cataract, bow to the authority in the name of Jesus. Every form of leukemia, bow to the authority in the name of Jesus. Every sickle cell anemia, blood related diseases, HIV, hepatitis, every ulcer, high fever, low fever, yellow fever, whatever kind of fever, Lassa fever, I command them to bow to the authority in the name of Jesus. John chapter 5, 20 to 21. For the Father loved the Son and showed him all things that he himself doeth. And he will show him greater works than this, that ye may marvel. For as the Father raised up the dead and quickened them, even so the Son quickened whom he will. The Son quickened whom he will. Present continuous tense. Just like God raised it, quickened them, even so the Son quickened whom he will. And John 17, 18 said, As the Father has sent him, he has sent us. We are not sent less than Jesus was sent. As the Father has sent him with the quickening power to quicken the dead, to quicken the dead, so God has sent us. Therefore, whatever needs to be quickened in your body, I command it to be quickened. Whatever need to be quickened for you to be fruitful, I command them to be quickened. In the name of Jesus, whatever one need to be quickened for you to enjoy multiplication, I command them to be quickened now in the name of Jesus. We had a testimony of that Catholic woman that came here one day. It was in a service like this. Covenant of fruitfulness last year, October last year, precisely. She came in here, stayed in the first service, and had the word. He said, that was my first time of entering this compound. She said, I must stay for the second survey. She stayed. There they talked about Wobi. He said, I need knowledge. I must go for knowledge. And this woman had a budget from a doctor in this town. That look, you cannot overlook. So come and pay 76,000 naira. Or else you won't get this access to this drug that will help you to overlook. But when she came here, she had the word of God. She said, look. I am fruitful by the word. She believed the word. And by the, the short of the story is, so a few weeks ago, she has delivered a baby girl. Hallelujah. <laughs> ovulation drug or no ovulation drug, she has delivered. 
Somebody is here today too. God will give you a testimony that will be that one. In Jesus name. What is in the name of Jesus that he is? Demons are cast out in the name of Jesus. Demons are cast out. Number two. Demons are cast out in the name of Jesus. Luke 10, 17. And the 17 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Not in our name, but through thy name. The devils are subject to us. Do you know what it means for the devil to be subject to you? That means you command him the way you want. You deal with him the way you want. You tell him go. He said, I'm going. <laughs> I stay here and I speak to sickness in, in America. They will go. Have you not been hearing testimonies like that? So how much more do you want that is close by? The devils are subject to us in your name. In the name of Jesus. Every devil tormenting your life that needs to bow, I command them to bow now. In the name of Jesus. I don't know where the devil is coming from, from your village, from the water, from the ocean, from the sea. <laughs> hey. Somebody said he was suffering from marine spirit, and that marine spirit since that time he has left her after prayer was made here. I've, now, any prayer you don't want to be answered, don't pray it here. Oh. Don't ever pray it here because it must be answered. The devils are subject to us. Say with me, the devils are subject to me. In the name of Jesus. So I should never hear from you again that one witch is harassing you and you are not saying, Pastor, pray, or pray, Pastor, pray. The devils are subject to you and I in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That's subject to all. Therefore, every devil that be following you from anywhere, from the earth, in your father's house, your mother's house, your village, from any shrine, even the devil that been assigned to you by wicked men and wicked women, Collecting money from you in the dream. Making sure that the things you display are not sold. Others are selling, you cannot be selling. Making sure that no seed stays in your womb. Miscarriages here and there. They attack you by certain things in the night. By you seeing a red thing. Or by them coming to make love to you in the dream. Or coming to, 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 to collect something from you in the dream. Or showing you some fruits. One, one thing or the other. But any devil that has been assigned against your destiny, hear me, they are subject to us in the name of Jesus. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I command some devils, loose them and let them go. I command some devils, loose focus on the pressure people of God. <laughs> You know what Jesus told them when they said this to them? Now hear this. Do you know that even Judas, the devil was subject to him? Even Thomas did most. Are you not better than these people are mentioning? Even Thomas did most also said the devils are subject to us in your name. Don't you think devils should be subject to you in the name of Jesus? If he can respond to the name of Jesus in the mouth of Judas and obey, are you not better than Judas? Do you want to tell me Judas is better than you? So the devils will subject to you <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Not in your name, not in your power, in the name of Jesus. I know what Jesus said after that, verse 19. He said, Behold, I give unto thee power to tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over every deadly thing. That they shall by no means. No means. No means. Mean no matter how. Hurt you. From now evil will not hurt you. Yeah. Whatever evil is meant to consume you. I send it to another assignment. Yeah. Will, evil will not see you. Yeah. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did you hear the testimony of that daughter of God today? They called her. I mean, she called them because she saw notice. Very be careful, be sensitive. 
There are many devices of the devil today. And she went there to look, to look for house. And they were trying to catch her, catch her. But the spirit in her couldn't allow them to do what they wanted to do. If it's any year, year person now, that's, that's the end. You'll just be hearing uh, somebody missing person. But the spirit in her, because he that is in you is greater than them that are in the world. The power that you use it cannot be equated, cannot come close to where you are. Because you're operating from far above, they're still under. So what you are far above cannot be catching, catching you. So you come here, you tell me that the 419 people cheat you, or they catch you, or they do this thing to you. I will check, I need to check the spirit in you. <laughs> because the spirit inside you now, if you are born again, child of God, the spirit inside you should be uncatchable. Say with me, uncatchable. The spirit inside you should be wind. He that is born of the spirit, the Bible says he's a wind. You don't know where he's going to, you don't know where he's coming from. You may hear the sound of the So, can you set trap for wind? Can you catch wind with your hand? Help me catch wind with your hand. Catch it. Let me see. It will escape. That is how your life is. You don't know who you are. If you are born again, child of God, you are uncatchable, unmolestable, unkillable, uncursable, untouchable, unharassable. <laughs> Hallelujah. You will not die before your time. In Jesus' glorious name. The devils are subject to us in your name. One day, I was in my office in Kaduna, and two women came. And when they came, this one will look at this one, this one will look at the other one. Nobody wants to talk. I said, So, what do you want? Is there anything one got to do for you? The one started. He said, Pastor. I'm part of the problem of this woman. I, said, I was interested. What happened? He said, Pastor, I took the money from her business I collected from her to her coven. And this is a woman that was helping a lot of people doing things, having three good businesses. All the businesses collapsed. He said, Pastor, I told her, except a great man of God pray for her. It will not be well with her. I said, so why did you come here? She said, we are checked. There's only somebody like you that can pray for her. I shall be okay. Even witches, so. They know. So how about you? Don't you want to pray? Say, Pastor, I want to be free. I'm tired. Pray for two of them there. You need to see what happened in the office. They scattered my office, two, those two women. <laughs> but the short of the story is that after some few weeks, the same woman came into the altar to share her own testimony that her businesses began to rise again, do well. Which means the ugly hand has been removed through through. Everyone that has put an ugly hand into your business, anyone that has put an ugly hand into your soup, Anyone that has put an ugly hand into your affairs, into the life of your children, you can't understand what is happening to your children. You can't understand what is happening to your spouse. I command that ugly hand to be uprooted. Everywhere they're taking your name, taking your picture, every vow that be made by anyone living or dead that will not have your children, you will not marry, you will not do well. You will not build house. You will not make success. I decree that vow is disappointed. Yeah. You know, if any or such people are alive as I talk to you now, please take note of the time I'm saying what I'm saying. Take note of the time. Take note of this hour because you will hear the testimony. Yeah. If any or such they are alive as I'm talking to you now, if they don't come to confess to you in 14 days, they are gone. You will hear the news. They are gone. And not only going, they will not go closing your womb, they must open it before they go. <laughs> Anywhere they took it to, like that woman has said, she took the money to their coven. They will go and bring it back. You will succeed. You will flourish. In Jesus' mighty name. Save me, I'm fruitful. 
and I'm multiplying. Hallelujah. Quickly, before we pray, what do I do to enjoy a life of fruitfulness? We have seen some things in the first service. Basically, for every blessing of God, you must be born again. That is non negotiable. But let's go ahead in this service and see a few more and we'll close. Now, number one, we want to say in this service, you must believe God for your fruitfulness. You must do what? In this kingdom, is to you according to your faith. Faith is a non transferable responsibility. Believe God for your fruitfulness. Luke 145. Blessed is she that believeth, for there shall be a performance of those things spoken to her from the law. Abraham, against hope, believed in hope. He staggered under the promise of God, we don't believe. He was strong in faith, giving glory to God, because he was fully persuaded, fully assured, fully convinced that what God had promised, he will also perform. Romans chapter 4, 18 to 21. Remember, your faith is a strong shield. Ephesians 6, 16, taking the shield of faith, where we shall be able to quench all the fiery dust of the devil. By faith, Sarah that was above 90 received strength to conceive by faith. Her body was dead. Her womb was dead. She received strength to conceive by faith today. I command the fruitfulness of everyone desiring the fruit of the womb. Yeah. One day in Kaduna, I shared a testimony of how God blessed us with a baby after seven years of waiting. And a woman had. And her testimony was like our own because she also, like us, then had two. Um, gears and she wanted a boy and she said God I want this kind of testimony do it for me now she didn't only get her testimony she got triplets before all the tests they were doing all the antenata they never saw three they only saw two but the day she delivered she, first one second one doctor said ah, there is something moving inside you so wait, before you know it, the third one, two boys, one girl. <laughs> you got it. Now somebody is here today. You deserve the fruit of the womb. Receive your twins. Receive your triplets. Receive your fruitfulness. In the name of Jesus. You want baby girl, receive baby girl. You want baby boy, receive baby boy. A man came to me after five years. Five years. As a mother of father, he made up his mind. He said, I don't want again because the next one may be a girl again. So they, he agreed with the wife. But when she had me sharing some testimony, she came with the, he came with the wife. I said, let's try again. Pastor, pray for us now. But make sure he's baby boy. <laughs> I said, if you want baby boy, you have baby boy. I will pray. And God answered. And he got baby boy after the six that the sixth child became baby boy and he called the child his own name. Hallelujah. So if you want baby boy, you get baby boy. If you want baby girl, you get baby girl. If you want baby boy, baby girl, receive it. In the name of Jesus. And what else? You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. You must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Luke 1, 34 to 35. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall it be? Seeing I know not a man. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. So the testimony in the first service today, a man that had no sperm count. With the light from here, I told him, how many sperm count did Mary use? Say no one. Only the power of the highest came upon him. Say the power of the highest is inside you if you are born again. So if the power of the highest is there, why are you looking for another power to get your wife pregnant? Why are you looking for sperm count? 
and they shut up the story in nine months. The wife came back with a baby boy. <laughs> Glory to God. Because if the same spirit that raises up from the dead is dwelling in you, that same spirit will quicken your mortal body. Will quicken your mortal body. By the quickening of the Holy Ghost, therefore, I command every important man to be quickened in Jesus' name. Every form of satanic seed may be caused by one sickness or the other, weak erection, caused by diabetes, high blood pressure, whatever. I command a restoration now. And number three, you must continue to give glory to God for your fruitfulness. And that's where the life of praise comes in. And you must be praiseful. Abraham staggered not at the promise of God with unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You must give glory to God to be fruitful. There is fruitfulness on this ground, but it will take your, the catalyst of praise for it to be quickened. You know, we are taught in elementary chemistry that the catalyst is a chemical substance that's not involved in the equation or in the reaction, but it quickens the chemical reaction. That's how it is. There is art. You say, let the people praise me. I let all the people praise me. Then the art will yield her increase. Psalm 67, 5 to 7. So praise is a spiritual catalyst that quickens your fruitfulness. Quickens it. Look at Hannah. Hannah was a pitiful, sorrowful woman. But one day, she went to Shiloh and she cried her heart out. And Eli told her to go back that her petition would be granted. And she went back she wiped her tears. She was no more sorrowful countenance. And when she returned back, First Samuel 1, 13 to 19, you see this story I'm talking about. In verse 19, when she returned back, a Kennedy husband knew her and she was remembered by God and she got Samuel. But she needs to throw away every form of sorrow. Some are not fruitful because of sorrow of heart. I may not so much blame you, but you have a right to ensure whether you are sorrowful or not. Yes, you can't stop a bird from flying across your head, but you can stop the bird from perching on your head. You can stop being sorrowful. Maybe because people are asking you, as a mother of us, some people may have even thought from coming to a service like this because they will think that the service is for them. Uh, maybe they will be when they say pray for and they know I don't have, they will think that maybe uh, what is wrong with me. No. No. You must be joyful. You must be praiseful. Don't allow sorrow. Children cannot stay in a sorrowful place. You can't make progress on a sorrowful environment. Some it goes to the extent that they quarrel with their husband or with their wife in the time of relation of the woman. The only time they have to get the miracle, they will now quarrel. They will fight. The following week, they go to crunches together. Say, I love you, I love you, I love you. Next month, again, the same. Don't you know it's a demonic attack? Denying you of your miracle. The only week you have to get your miracle, the devil will make you to quarrel so that you will not meet. Haba. Be wise now. The last will be the last forever. In Jesus' mighty name. Therefore, I decree, anywhere joy has withered, that makes things to wither, I command restoration of joy. Restoration of peace. In Jesus' mighty name. Please, when you get back home today, organize praise for God. Thank Him that you're a woman, that you can carry a child. Thank him that you are a man, you can you can have a you can father a child. Thank him that the work of your hand can progress. Give him glory. Celebrate him. And you will see God causing the art to yield that increase to you. Rise on your feet. We are going to close now, but let's pray some prayers. But before we pray, before we pray today. <laughs> Before we pray, if you are here, you are not born again. 
I want you to stand on the same platform with us so that you can receive your miracle. Hallelujah. You know, after this service, there's going to be miracle marriage rally. The first thing they will do is to be dancing and celebrating God. Because God walks in the atmosphere of praise. Who is like unto thee, O Lord? Glorious in holiness, fearful in praises. Do it wonders, including the wonders of fruitfulness. Now, no inheritance is given to a man who is not a member of a family. No matter how you are close to a family, when they are sharing their family inheritance, they have to excuse you until they finish sharing the inheritance. Until a member of the household of God, you can partake of the power in the name of Jesus. Somebody is here today, you are tired of going, things going haywire. No peace, no joy, no progress. How long will you continue that way? Why not turn to Jesus? Somebody is here today, want to say, Jesus, be my Lord and my Savior. Put your hand on your chest right now. I want to pray this prayer of salvation with you. Somebody else gave his or her life to Jesus someday, but you are no more there. Pressures of life, pressures of friends, circumstances of life, cares of this world, may I push you out. Why not return to him? He will return to you. Put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer of salvation with me. Somebody also is struggling with certain evil habits, and you know that without Jesus, you can't be free. Why not turn to him today and say, Lord, save me. Put your hand on your chest. Pray this prayer of salvation with me. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. I believe in my heart. You are the only Son of God. You died and you resurrected on the third day. Today, from my heart and with my mouth, I confess you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Thank you for writing my name in the book of life. I am born again. I am a child of God. A member of the household of God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' glorious name. Please, you pray that prayer with me. Wave your hand to Jesus, wherever you are. You pray that prayer. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you for your sincerity. Please carry your bag, your Bible, whatever you came to church with, including your point of contact. Please come with it right now to the front of the altar here. In case you are here also, you come with the invitation card where you wrote your prayer request. Please give it to the ushers. We're going to pray on that also before we close. Please come. If you are coming, come to the front of the altar now. Come the way you are. He loves you the way you are. Come to him. Walk out on the devil. Tomorrow may be too late. This is the day of salvation. Don't close your heart to him. Come, come, come. I got my mind made up. And I'm I will won't come back. another well, and he called the name Rehoboam, and this time they strove not with him. And he said, God has made a room for us, and we shall be fruitful in the land. God will make room for you. God will make room for you. You'll be fruitful in this land. 
So we are going to pray. Father, uproot every root of fruitlessness in my life. My family, in my endeavors, make a roof for me and make me fruitful in the land. This land will bless you. In Jesus' name. Father, uproot every root of fruitlessness in my life. In my family, in my endeavors, make a room for me and make me fruitful in the land. Go ahead and pray from the depth of your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, uproot every root of fruitlessness in my life. For whatever my heavenly father has not planted shall be rooted out. Uproot every root of fruitfulness. You said in your word that I'll be fruitful, that I'll multiply, that I'll replenish the earth. Father, therefore, uproot every root of fruitlessness in my life, in my family, in my endeavors. Make room for me in the land. Make me fruitful in the land. Make me fruitful spiritually. Make me fruitful mentally. Make me fruitful bodily. Make me fruitful in the work of my hand. Make me fruitful, O oh Lord. Make a room for me where I cannot reach. Make a room for me. Jesus, make a room for me. Make me fruitful for me in the land. Please, if I touch you, move towards my right, move towards my right, move towards my right, move towards my right. Hebara to see a baka. Father, make me fruitful in the work of my hand. Make me fruitful in my body. Make me fruitful in my mind. Make me fruitful, Lord, in my spirit. Let my spiritual life be fruitful. I cannot be moving around the circle spiritually. Lord, make me fruitful. Make me fruitful in the work of my hand. Make me fruitful in my endeavors. Make a room for me, Lord. Uproot what you have not planted in me. Let every anti-fruitfulness forces be uprooted. Jesus, whatever is siphoning my seed, siphoning my blessing, siphoning my efforts. <laughs> we give you glory and praise. In Jesus' mighty name. <laughs> One day we are interviewing some pastors. Because we discovered that the churches under them were not growing. And one of them said that um, the place they posted him is very, very hard. That in the town, anytime he speaks, witches will swallow the world. <laughs> so that's why the church is not growing. <laughs> now hear me. In case anything has been swallowing what you are doing, today they will vomit it. <laughs> Job 2015. He said, They have swallowed up riches. They shall vomit it up again. God will cast it out of their belly. Whatever belongs to you that be swallowed up, your destiny, the favors due to you, your seeds that be swallowed up, they are using some umbilical cord to swallow seeds from your womb. I decree today they shall vomit it up again. Whatever work of hand you brought here today or point of contact to it you are prayed on, that work of hand blossoms from now. Yeah. You will never have a better year, last year in that business. Yeah. Oh, somebody, your business is only known with complimentary card or CAC registration. From now, that business will begin to produce fruits. Yeah. Somebody here, your account has been dry, nothing is inside. But hear me, that account will begin to blossom again. <laughs> Somebody is even in the minus. You are not even in the red, you are in the minus. You are owing here and there. But two things are going to happen. It's either you are empowered to pay those debts and flourish, or God will give you supernatural debt cancellation. <laughs> but you are free from every form of anti-fruitfulness force. Yeah. I divorce you from such. Yeah. We will hear testimony. Just like that woman, remember, 
it was in a fruitfulness class like this, a fruitfulness service like this she came, and today she has a baby girl, that Catholic woman. Now somebody has come here today, as it's in the season of life, we will hear your testimony of fruitfulness on this altar. In Jesus' mighty name. Be blessed. Every request that has been placed here is turned to a testimony. These requests are turned to testimonies. I decree beyond what you have written, God will give to you. Yo, we keep hearing testimonies of such people. I joined the church in January. I joined the church in February. I joined the church in April. I see what God has done. Says that God has been answering this prayer. So, the same way, everyone that dropped anything here, I command that request to turn to a testimony. Be blessed in Jesus' mighty name.